this has been a crazy week. We had Elon's battery day. We've had volatility in the markets. We've seen the VIX, the VXN jump. And today I wanna to talk a little bit about all of those and what potentially we could see for the coming weeks ahead. For the last 12 months, we've heard so much about battery day, Elon's big event. And this past Tuesday, he had launched into his what the future looks like. But at the end of battery day, and his announcements about the future of what is to come for his company, the stock ended up closing lower. Why? And then the next day, Wednesday, it even dropped further. Why? Well, I think it has a lot to do with hype. See, this has been touted as a big event for over 12 months now. Battery day, the evolution of electric electrical cars. And two weeks earlier, we saw the grandfather of automotive development jump into the ring of electric cars in partnership with another startup electric car company. So was Battery Day a failure? Was Elon's hype, well, mishype? I don't think so. What I believe it is, is that it's the old thing. Buy on the rumor, sell on the news. It happens every quarter to a lot of companies. There's a big hype about earnings coming into the quarter and there's a buildup in that position or that stock. And then at the, when they report earnings, they sell off. Not because they missed, some cases they do. Other cases they hit their numbers or exceed them and they still sell off. The sad thing is, Elon's probably got a great idea. Not probably, he does. I mean, even me, I'm thinking about buying an electric car. I'm thinking about the future of our environment, you know? California comes out and supports his vision of electrical vehicles by saying by 2035, they're not gonna allow any more combustion engines into, or combustion engine cars into, the United, into their state. I mean, that's a pretty drastic move, you think about it. And that's pretty aggressive to get everybody who's in California off of combustion engines. But the point is, he's not off his rocker. I think he's on his rocker and moving forward. He's showing the future. But the problem is, we're getting caught up in the hype. I believe a lot of people got crushed by that move, that two-day move on Elon stock. Um, got discouraged. I mean, I spoke to a guy yesterday who was a young guy, young investor, really just wants to do good for himself. COVID has brought him into the fold of, of investing and he bought on the hype. He said, I bought up. It moved to the, you know, it's all-time highs. Why would it go down? Well, it goes down because the machines want it to go down because that's how they make money. We saw it was Tim's company. He did a big multiple split. Everybody bought, buys in as the split was going up. And then what happens? Stock sells off. Why? It's simply the machines. They're driving this market and they're not basing their decisions on what you base your decisions on. Oh, this is the future. Yeah, it is the future. I don't disagree with you. But what I do disagree with is how you enter that, that trade. And then after fact, when you have taken it on the chin and you're like, oh, I, and sell it. See, see, markets have changed so much since I got in the business. Heck, when my grandfather got in the buying stocks, you bought companies because they were fundamentally strong. And over time they would grow and their earnings per share would grow and they would change the world and they did. But now they don't. No, technology changed that. I wrote an article back in like 2000, 2001, I believe. And it was based on the fall of the Berlin Wall and how that opened the world up to fiber optic. I'm gonna go scrounge it up and see if I have it. And if I do, I'll post it and put it in the link below. Put a link in below so you can check it out. But what it basically was saying was when the Berlin Wall fell and we saw fiber optic connect the whole world and we were able to start collecting data and getting data, all of a sudden the game sped up and changed. There's a book by Thomas Friedman uh, it called Thank You For Being Late. And basically there's a part of it where he talks about how the chessboard is an example of technology and that each square doubled represents the amount of speed that, uh, that a microchip is processing. And as, as he points out, we're only halfway through the chessboard and the speed of microprocessors are speeding up the world. And by the time we get to the full end of the chessboard, you won't recognize our world. 
You see that in 5G, you see that in what Elon's doing or what Tim's doing or what Jeff's doing. They're building companies that are changing the world and technology is driving it. But also, technology is driving this market. One thing I hate about the idea of electrical vehicles, well, it's bicycles. Bicycles are meant to be pedaled by the human being. They gener you generate the energy, you move them. Electric bikes, it just creates, well, unhealthy people. Jim Simons, the founder of the Renaissance Hedge Fund, has the most successful return rate in history. It even beats Warren Buffett. One of the most successful investors in the entire world over in history is not a professor or a PhD in economics. He's not a finance guy. He's a mathematician. Actually, he came from the code breaking world of the military, breaking codes. Quantitative funds look at volatility, volume, and the volatility of the volatility. So if you had looked at previous weeks prior to Battery Day or prior to the um, big uh, Tim Cook uh, event when they uh, launched the d different new products, you would have seen the volatility was going up, meaning there was more negative than positive in the coming weeks. So markets have moved because of the volatility. Just go look at it, get to know it, understand it, and you'll make better investment decisions. So what's coming next week? Well, volatility is still high. Over, the VIX is still over 26. The VXN is still over 33. We're looking at the VXAL, VXAPL, which is Tim's volatility index, and it's still over its bullish trend uh, environment. So what I'm looking at is, well, what's about to fall? What's about to, when's the shoe gonna drop? And most importantly, why is the market gonna get bullish all of a sudden? Well, I believe the market's gonna get, get bullish in maybe the next 30, 60 days. And the reason is, well, it's Pelosi. See, Pelosi and her ele other elected officials are trying to push through another $2.4 trillion uh, stimulus. Well, if it goes as they plan, you'll have money in your bank if you qualify. Some people won't. And right now what's happening is the economy is slowing. The rate of change is increasing to the negative. And that's why we're starting to see a rotation in the equity market. If this stimulus bill hits, could be bullish again. We could see equity markets go higher, but if we see them back, back and forth, back and forth, and nothing comes of it, well, we could see more downside pressure on equity markets. The bond market really isn't pricing correctly. And the reason is, is because the Federal Reserve is supporting the bond market. It's suppressing yields and keeping valuations high, which maybe shouldn't be the way it is. It should be, you know, mark, markets make the decision of what the values are. But unfortunately, the Federal Reserve's uh, activity in the market has really become manipulative to an extent. And all they're doing is a continuation of buying bonds, in this case, treasuries, now ETFs. My question is, when do they step into the equity market? The two year is bouncing between uh, 0.15 and 0.10 of a yield. You don't make any money on that if you compare it to inflation. But the thing we're looking for is that break below 0.10. If we see that, we think trouble's on its way. The 10-year treasury is bouncing between 0.74 and 0.63. If it breaks below 0.63, well, it could be bearish for equities. This is where risk management really comes into play. This is where looking at your weightings and your positions and asking yourself a question, if this happens, then therefore this happens. So it's like, what are your next five steps? Recently I read a great book on what are your next five steps? When you're investing your money, you should have a, if this happens, therefore this happens approach. So the following are my three takeaways for the coming week. Number one, look at volatility. What is volatility doing? Is it going up? Is it breaking through its bullish thresholds or breaking below its bullish into its bearish thresholds. 
volatility is gonna tell you a whole lot about what's about to come. Second, watch for what the Congress does, the government does with a stimulus package. If it comes to fruition, I think it's a plus for equity markets. And the third thing I think you need to be looking for is watching the financials. When I mean financials, I mean like the banks. Lately, they've been trending downward and they are really an indicator of fear in the market. The key to all this is as you're investing or you're working with an advisor, make sure you have a process to your approach. Make sure you understand what they're doing or what you're doing. The worst thing you can, somebody can do when it comes to investing is let their emotions get into it, to go off their gut. I'm gonna leave my information below in the comments. Feel free to email me or schedule a time to talk for 20 minutes about what's on your mind. In the meantime, live loud.